Hey there everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to be playing through a full solo game of Obsession with the Upstairs Downstairs expansion against Dan's dynamic AI opponent using the cooperative opponent rule set he laid out. If you're not familiar with how this works, I'll explain it as I go along. As with scores of other videos I've created over the years, I will be doing all of this using a program that I wrote to play the game. The advantage of my using a program in a video such as this is that it'll provide you with a front row seat and let you see everything that's going on in detail. Beyond that, my program's going to ensure that I don't make any mistakes in the course of this presentation. If you've ever done this sort of thing in the past, you know you can easily become forgetful in the course of simultaneously trying to teach and play and present a game all at the same time. My program is going to make sure I don't accidentally forget some rule or skip some important step. Suffice it to say, I write these programs for my own personal enjoyment. I don't make them available to the public due to copyright restriction unless a publisher makes special arrangements with me. Although I've written a program to play the game, I'm actually pretty new to the game, so I can't guarantee how well I'm going to play today, and I can't promise I won't make any ridiculous strategic mistakes. But believe it or not, this is honestly the first time I've played solo using this dynamic AI, so I have a feeling it's going to whip my butt. When you're playing cooperatively, the rules say the Sneed component, as Dan calls it, should start the game with the Servants' Hall. Since I'm playing solo today and not cooperatively with two or more people, I'm going to turn that option off because I, I have the feeling the AI is going to kill me without needing to steal one reputation from me every round. But I'm not going to let the, the AI opponent start with the Servants' Hall. I'm actually not sure how well this design plays solo, so this is going to be a bit of an experiment. I'm going to assume that if you're watching this, you already know how the base game and the upstairs-downstairs expansion work. If you don't, I'll be posting a full tutorial of the game that will be coming out sometime this week. For this playthrough, I'm going to be playing Blue, and my AI opponent, the family Sneed, will be playing Red. The rules indicate that I should start the game with the first player marker, which means that Sneed will choose a random family board first. Now, since I'm playing with the upstairs-downstairs expansion, not to mention Wessex as well, that means that in addition to choosing a family board, we, we are each going to be choosing one extra bonus servant to start the game with from a selection of short servants pulled from the servants for hire area. Since I'm going first in the game, Sneed's going to randomly choose a family and a servant, and then I'll choose second. With all that in mind, let's get underway, and like I said, I'll explain what's happening with the AI when the time comes. All right, so Sneed took York and took a useful man. So you can see here that one of every type of servant, including the upstairs-downstairs servants, has been taken from the Servants for Hire area and placed out here in the center. Since he's playing York, he actually now has two footmen plus all his other regular servants and the useful man. For my family, I'm going to go with Howard, which is probably my favorite because you start the game with a cook, which means I can't choose the cook now because you can only own one of each of those upstairs, downstairs servants. I'm going to choose as my bonus the uh, head housemaid, whose primary benefit is that she lets you screen invites. Now that everyone's chosen, the game will begin. I will be taking the first turn. Red Sneed was going through some setup there, which I'll explain when we come to Red's first turn. For now, uh, we're just getting a look at what the uh, builder's market looks like right at the moment. I certainly have my eye on the servants' quarters. I'd, I'd actually like to grab the carriage house, too. Uh, I think uh, these are my two priorities. Probably this is number one, and this is number two. All right, so that's my game plan. Here are my five starting objectives. Now, Sneed was only dealt two starting objectives 
and he'll only get one more over the course of the game and they're they're kept secret so I'm gonna keep those in the back of my mind this is my starting hand with my four Howard family members and my starting guests of uh, Obadiah Beal he is the son of a wealthy Matlock rector and appears to prefer society to following in his father's footsteps and Beatrice Countess of Rochdale is my second starting casual guest and uh, she's the mother of Lady Mary Russell who is another uh, guest card that may or may not turn up in the course of today's game the Countess is considered overly loud and lacking refinement so now that I know I'm after that servants quarters I know I need to uh, end this first round with 500 pounds in order to grab it which means that we're going to the bowling green to play some bowls because that's going to provide me with 300 pounds and then as guests you know what I'm going to add the cook for an additional reputation I will add James Earl Howard for another 200 pounds which will bring me up to 500 pounds and my second guest is the unrefined Beatrice, Countess of Rochdale, who automatically gets assigned the ladies' maid. As you can see, the Bowling Green, my program automatically assigned the, um, the footman. So I think we're good to go. Uh, I should come away with 500 pounds, two reputation, one from the cook and one from Beatrice, and should I put the head housemaid here and screen this invite? Why not? Let's bring the head housemaid down here and we'll screen this casual guest invite. Okay. So there's my 500 pounds, my two reputation, and then my two drawn casual guests are Walter Tuttle and Rosamund Simpson. And I'm going to go with the Rosamund. Walter will go to the bottom of the casual guest deck. I'm going to add Rosamund to my hand. With my 500 pounds as promised, I am going to take the servant's quarters. Good way to start the game. Now, before I click and turn, let's shoot over to Sneed so I can tell you what the AI player did before the game even started, which is effectively what you're going to do for the AI player prior to the start of the game. He begins with his hand of family cards and two starting guests, just, so, just like we did. But for his five starting tiles, he resolved all five of them automatically and flipped them to their row side. So Sneed has already planned for the village fair and will collect the money and the reputation when the two village fairs come around. He hired two footmen when he was resolving the butler's room. And those two footmen did not come from the servants for hire, but they instead came from the game supply. So if we look on the supply board, you can see there's still four footmen sitting in the servants for hire. For the main gazebo, he also held an afternoon tea and automatically drew a prestige guest, which it looks like was Sir Peter Outeridge sitting here. He flipped his front parlor uh, after gaining three reputation, which is why he's at 1.4. And he flipped his bowling green after taking 300 pounds, which is why he's starting the game with 300 pounds. After resolving and flipping all of his uh, starting tiles, the AI shuffled his family cards together, dealt them out one at a time, until he revealed either the family daughter or the family son. In fact, he revealed the son, the Honorable Alan Waters. He left Alan face up, but he took the rest of his family members and flipped them face down, along with his two starting guests, they are also face down, and his two starting guests were Charles Wadsworth and Agnes Dansby. At this point, all of his cards are face down except for Alan and the prestige guest that uh, Sneed started with thanks to the main gazebo. 
At the end of the game, he's going to score all the victory points on these casual guests and all the cards that are face down. If he ever gains additional casual guests, they too will automatically go face down. He won't do anything with them other than score their victory points at the end of the game. As soon as Sneed achieves a reputation of three, he will then resolve Sir Peter's favors. He'll gain 300 pounds, and then he'll place Sir Peter Outeridge face down beneath Allen as well. So while Sneed doesn't resolve the favors of his other family members or his starting casual guests, or any casual guests that he draws in the future, he does resolve the favors of prestige guests, but only when his reputation gets high enough. As the game progresses, and as Sneed resolves new tiles and new cards that cause him to gain more prestige guests, if those prestige guests have a prestige rating less than or equal to his reputation at the time, they'll be resolved immediately. If not, they'll just stay face up until Sneed's reputation causes them to trigger the favors on those prestige cards will then get resolved and they'll flip face down. And that's pretty much the essence of what the AI player does. So it's not a lot of work on your part. And when you're playing with a dynamic AI, you generally play with an open courtship. So we know that the first courtship theme is going to be sporting, shown up here. Should Sneed ever win the courtship, he will secretly draw a VP card as usual. And because his random face-up family member is Alan, then if he does win a courtship, he will choose Elizabeth Fairchild as his love interest, or as Alan's love interest. Then he'll resolve both Alan's card, taking the one reputation over the 100 pounds, and he'll resolve Elizabeth's card as well. I actually think I set up my program to take the money from Alan should Sneed's reputation ever max out at 7.5, but that's not something we have to worry about for a long time to come. When it's Sneed's turn, the 20-sided die is going to be rolled, and Sneed is going to choose a card to take from the builder's market, as you'll soon discover. So let's end my turn, and we'll let the AI roll the die and then we'll take it from there. Okay, he rolled a one. So here's the chart that the dynamic AI player follows when rolling the 20-sided die. And on a roll of one to eight, he chooses to take the value tile from the builder's market. Now, what's the value tile? Well, first he's going to look for a monument tile that matches the current theme card meaning uh, that would be the big game trophy room. Well, that's not in the builder's market. So next, he's going to look for a tile that is a sporting tile, just any old tile that's a sporting tile. And if there are more than one, he's always going to take the one that's cheapest. Well, as it turns out, there's no sporting tiles in the builder's market. Next, he's going to look for any monument tile and take the cheapest one. No monument tiles because this is the initial builder's market. So next, he looks for the cheapest prestige tile. Well, there are two prestige tiles. This one costs 300 This one costs 700 So he's going to take the retiring room, add it to his organizer. He's going to resolve it and gain one reputation, and then flip it over to its rose side. And nothing else is going to happen at, at that point. Not until he gets to a reputation of three will any prestige cards get resolved. All right, I'm going to unpause and let him do his thing. He takes the retiring room, adds it to his organizer, gains one reputation, flips it to its row side, and we move on to round two. And it's that easy. So it's my second turn. Now, do I want to go for the village fair? You know what? I think I do. I don't want to be left out. So I'm going to... I'm going to go with the private study. The butler is placed there automatically. For my two family members, I will choose Victoria and her daughter, Lady Diana, who provides a casual guest 
Uh, I have the servant's quarter, so I'm going to take the head housemaid from servant's quarters and drop it on Diana. I will also screen two casual guests thanks to Victoria. So let's proceed. Draw two casual. This is Lady Diana's draw, though it doesn't really matter. They're both casual draws. So we're choosing between Victoria Turner and Winston Hayward. I'm going to go with Victoria, who provides uh, one victory point. And now for my other screen, I'm choosing between Francis Trotwood and Penelope Atwood. They're both PR1s. Clearly, Francis is a better bet because he provides the same casual guess that Penelope does in addition to one reputation. So I am going to take him. My private study flips. Victoria and Diana go to the discard pile. And the servants I used end up in expended service. All right, that will bring us to Sneed's second turn. He rolls a one. Again, the value tile. Nothing new popped up other than another prestige tile, so he's going to go for the drawing room, I'm sure. Yep, goes under the retiring room. He gains three more reputation. He's at 2 3. Village Fair, I get two re reputation, 300 pounds. And this time around, I, want, I think I'm going to go with the uh, main gazebo. Get a prestige guest. Once again, use the uh, head housemaid. Or better yet, uh, let's see, who am I going to invite first? Invite Thomas, the son. And how about Francis? And I'm okay. You know what? Let's. Let's not screen the prestige guest. Instead, we'll use the head housemate to screen the casual guest from Francis. I think that's probably a better choice. So I think I'll take the 100 pounds from Thomas. This is our prestige guest, Eunice Palmer. One of the uh, upstairs downstairs guests, Viscountess Palmer, wife of former Consul General of Russia. For the screening from uh, Trotworth, I can choose either Theodore Lodge or Elizabeth Viscountess Peel. I'm going to take Peel. And then with my 400 pounds, go right after the carriage house. All right, York's uh, going into bottom of round three, the York. Gets his village fair first. Rolled a 19. On a 19, he doesn't do anything, but he does uh, lower his next die roll on his next turn by two, so, so he doesn't get anything twice in a row. And now it's the courtship. It's a tie. So I get a VP card, a four-pointer, refresh servants, as did uh, Sneed. We don't know what it is. And I have to discard a, uh, an objective card. Quite sure I can probably fulfill these. Not sure about that or that. I think uh, this is probably going to be the one I'm going to dump for now. Okay, the start player changes. Now Sneed is the first player. We're into the top of round five. The next uh, theme card is Service. 
Sneed rolls a 10, oh, but he offsets that by 2 because he didn't do anything last turn. So, in effect, he uh, pulled an 8. And does that mean he's going to take the tennis court? No, I'm sorry. The service tiles, the uh, theme, the theme is now service. There are no service tiles out there because they have all gone into the reserve. No monument tile. So is he taking? Yeah, he's taking another prestige tile. He's taking the ornamental hermitage. He'll collect three reputation. That'll bring him into a reputation of three which means uh, this will trigger and Sir Peter Outeridge will generate 300 pounds and then flip over. And now it's the bottom of round five, my turn. Should we have some whist? Produces three reputation. I'll put the cook on it for four reputation. We'll invite, let's invite Rosamond. And for my second guest, I, oh, I have the cook. I can, can invite up to uh, prestige rating four, thanks to the cook. So I will invite Viscountess Palmer, who will produce 300 pounds. That'll be two reputation from the guests. She needs the uh, lady's maid. Three reputation up here. Five reputation plus the one from the cook will take me to three, two. And with my 400 pounds, well, there's nothing out there. As far as service is concerned, I'm actually ahead of point, And it's unlikely that he will choose a service tile. Actually, he won't choose a service tile at this point because the reserve's already been set up. So I think I should end up winning the next courtship. I will take the North Dining Room for 400. Brings us into round six. That will be the objective card draw. Sneed will draw one objective card that we won't see. And then he'll roll his die. And when it's our turn, we'll get uh, two new objectives. He gained a reputation there. What was going on? He has the... Uh, ornamental hermitage that flipped and became a monument so now he's going to be getting one reputation every round good for him he rolled a 15 which will uh, cause him to take the third tile the tennis court three hundred pounds he doesn't spend money it's just uh, he gets the points for it at the end of the game I get two more objective cards. We'll decide about those later. Light blue is not bad, though. Though I'm still looking for those servants' objectives. And actually, this might be a good time to pass. Especially since I want to now use my north dining room. So, yes, I'm going to pass. And I'm going to hire... I'm pretty heavy on ladies here. I really need some men. I especially need some male prestige guests because I haven't been able to use Diana. I'm going to take a ladies maid and I'll take a useful man. Although the hall boy would be handy for the carriage house. That'll be for my next pass. I'll take the useful man for now. Round seven, rules of three, uh, no monuments, no service tiles. Uh, is he taking the smoking room? 
He doesn't have the smoking room. I think he's taking that. Yes, three more reputation. I've got a full deck, full set of servants, and it is time for the Nord dining room. I don't think I need my footman. He'll go on the carriage house, so I'll be able to invite six gentry, which is pretty darn nice for a reputation of three. So let's sort from high to low, and we'll go back to uh, Viscountess Palmer. Oh, well, where's my cook? How about now? There we go. By Countess Palmer, Peel would be good for some reputation. Adelaide's maids, Victoria, you'll have to wait. Obadiah, Obadiah, I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to make use of you. Sorry. Uh, Beatrice, out of ladies' maids, and can't use the housekeeper. She's tied up. Rosamond. Yeah, you're a good choice. Don't require service. Francis is a good choice. I might want to put the head housemate on you. And now we're into family. Sorry, Diana, you're going to have to still uh, stew and wait for a man to show up. Uh, we'll invite uh, the Countess and uh, for her built-in screen, and then we'll invite James, and I think, is that, to, let's see, if I try to invite you, that's not going to work, because I, I think I'm too heavy. Yeah. All right, so you're out. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, five gentry plus one is six. I think we're all good. Screen on you. Gets me to 4-3. And we're going to draw. I don't think I have anybody I need to. Yeah, I don't have any negatives yet. So I'll draw two casual. Not you. Oh, are you related to Victoria? Beautiful niece of the Earl of Kellynch, Kellen, Kellen, Kellenich? Lady Marianne is a is a twin and a gifted harpist. Come on, you're not Victoria's twin, are you? Where are you, Victoria? I gotta know. Beautiful niece, you are. You are the two. You're the two twins. Didn't know that. Victoria and Marianne. So we've got to invite Marianne. And now for Victoria. Ooh, I like this fun. Hoyas. Uh, both a casual and a prestige guest as favors. We'll take you over Hawk. 500 pounds to spend. I could go for the flower room. This is good just before my next pass when I'm light on, when my deck is light again. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Heritage Guest Suite. May, may not be the best choice, but uh, can't quite make it to the summer house. But I do want that West Saloon, if I can get my hands on it. All right, uh, where are we round seven? Or is this going into the courtship? I think so, and I think it's mine to win. It is. I'm ahead by two. What do I have? One, two, three to one. I'll invite Elizabeth. And I have to get rid of an objective. 
brushing room, but no barn. Probably should pick up the brushing room. My next hire will probably be another footman, I bet. So um, that might be a good choice. So I think I want to hang on to these for the moment. We're halfway through. I'm not sure what I might get out of this. I doubt I'll get to six. So I think I'll drop the monument uh, objective. And now I'm first player again, and it's a prestige, which I am definitely going to lose. Next, uh, next village fair, and I will use my useful man for an extra 200. So I'm at 500 pounds, and I haven't done anything yet. And I don't have any servants. So speaking of passing, I could use this. But I've got these. Uh, I've got these. I have to fulfill. I need a hall boy, and I need 13 or more servants. Where do I stand right now? Two, four, six, seven, eight. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to 13. Oh wait, I got you over here. That's that's nine. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Two more hires, one more after this. So I'm going to pass. Hire two. I, I could recruit, but I'm going to hire. And I'm going to hire a hall boy for that objective and for use on the carriage house. And I'll hire another footman. And I sh will have to plan on... In fact, right now, I think I'll pick up the brushing room. Village Fair for Sneed. Takes him over five. Grabs the flower room, a state tile, because he's used up all the prestige tiles. So that's going to get him a prestige guest if it's five or, yep, it's three. So it's going to resolve immediately. And he gets three more reputation. So is it five, four? All right. What did I buy in the last time? I bought the brushing room. So I think, I mean, I could use the Heritage Guest Suite, but it's, it's, how can I pass up another go with the North Dining Room? I mean, that was just, that's just so fruitful. Then I'll hopefully have some money to buy, uh, what am I looking at? French Garden would be a good choice. So it's going to be the uh, North Dining Room again with the housekeeper. I could bring my hall boy over. Let's tentatively use you. Because I don't think I need you for anything. So once again, let's sort in descending order. So Elizabeth, you're coming this time. And Miss Palmer. Still don't have any male prestige guests. Uh, Mr. Hoyas. Yeah, let's give you the housemaid. Mrs. Peel. I'm out of ladies' maids. Can't use the housekeeper. Nope, nope, nope. Obadiah, I don't think I'll ever invite you to anything. Sorry. Uh, Beatrice. Possibly, but I need money. I need money. Uh, though, where, what am I at right now? I got four, another three. I think I'll pass on Trotwood since I have now. 
possibly you. Definitely you. And probably Victoria. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the cook. Just for the extra reputation. All right. Probably should screen the casual guest. But I have time to dismiss people if necessary. I don't want anybody too low on the prestige. You know what? Let's, let's I think I want to screen the prestige guest. For Thomas, I need the money. So that plus that will get me a 700. Make it a thousand. Where'd I get all that money? Oh, Miss Palmer, 300. Sorry, I forgot about you. So for you, I think we're going to draw too casual. Ann Hawk, it's a little late for an American heiress. But I can get you for the cash and then dump you. I need to, I do have that wealth objective. And you're definitely a better choice than... Miss Thatcher. I'm going to go with uh, Ann Hawkins. The prestige screen. Oh, I'm kind of glad I did this. Um, she's nice, but to hog two ladies' maids, uh, I'll take your four reputation. And I need that male, I need you. I need that male prestige guest badly. So I have a thousand pounds to spend this is 900 I could use my useful man and make it eight this definitely this is definitely the best choice for me right now I'm just on the verge of getting to six reputation French garden use the useful man And uh, probably Heritage Guest Suite is going to be a good choice next round because I'm light on service. Coming up is the Builder's Holiday. So on the Builder's Holiday, you, um, the AI will automatically roll the dice twice. It, he'll, he'll, he'll basically take two turns at the market. So the first rule is an eight, which is probably going to be another estate. It's going to be the summer house, I think, which gets him a uh, casual guest that goes right to the uh, bottom of the deck. Oh, you rolled again. How come? Oh, because uh, the courtship tile, the drawing room is there, and you already have a drawing room. So he roll again, and this time he rolled an 11, and is going to take the summer house in position one. So no difference. I think, and now you're going to roll again, right? If everything works. So you get a prestige, you get a casual guest. Okay, that's fine. I know. Oh, now it's the Builder's Holiday. Sorry, next turn York will go twice. And I only have 200 pounds. Um, I'm going to use my Heritage Guest Suite to tide me over. And who is my best bet? A casual guest. My best casual guest. That doesn't, I, I mean, I could steal a lady's maid from servants' quarters, but I prefer not to. Although, Mary Ann for the prestige. Oh, I can't, uh, well, I could use you, Mary Ann. Well, 
Where's your sister? Victoria is for 200 pounds. So do I want 200 pounds or do I want another prestige guest? Now I've got two male prestige guests. I think the money is probably better. So I think it's going to be Victoria, which will get double. I could use the hall boy. Now the hall boy doesn't double, but the 200 doubles to four, and then the hall boy adds another 100 to get me to five, which will bring me to seven. And that, I think, is going to be enough for the saloon, I think. Where are you? Where's the saloon? You didn't take... Oh, the saloon's all the way over here. Wow! I somehow missed all that time when it uh, migrated. It's dirt cheap. What a bargain. Okay. Did I get all the money I expected? 500 pounds. Brought me to seven. Taking the West Saloon for four. And I do have 300 pounds. Do I want another tile? Can I afford another tile? I could get the Servants Hall. Well, no, that's five. I can't afford another tile. Oh, well, that's all right. So now I think uh, Sneed is going to roll the dice twice. You get a reputation of six. You roll a five. Okay, you're rolling again. I didn't pause fast enough. The value tile uh, gets the drawing room again. Can't use it. Gets a 10 this time. Position 1 is going to take the south lawn and going to get 300 pounds. And should roll again. Second roll. For the Builder's Holiday. Value tile's not going to cut it. A 10, take the parish church. You can have it. Although that will flip to a monument. So there's, uh, but you're already near the max anyway. So. Okay, you win the courtship. No question about it. You're going to resolve both both people. So uh, the son gets a, rep, a reputation. She gets a prestige, which will probably resolve. Yep. You resolve for two more reputation. You're at max at 7-5. And I'm discarding an objective card. And I don't think that barn's going to make an appearance. I think... This is worth four. I think this is probably going to go. Oh, no. Okay. So you, he's, uh, Sneed's first. He takes the English garden. And it's going to be another prestige courtship. So I haven't got a prayer. That could do me in. Uh, you are resolving guests here. Yep, another one. That's another 300 pounds or so. And it's back to me. Bottom of round 13. And I think I'm bringing out the West Saloon with the carriage house. Yep. Use the footman on the carriage house. And now we're looking at inviting eight people 
boy, if I have a chance, it's, it's going to be this North Dining Room and this West Saloon that may put me over the top if I can possibly win. Nice thing about this game is you have no clue until the end. It could be anybody's game. All right, uh, let's sort again top to bottom. Okay, so this time, uh, where are you? You're definitely coming, Diana. And I'll have you be joined by Alistair, um, uh, Alistair Marquess of Kent. Might be a little old for you, but so be it. Uh, how about John Ward Brooks? You can have your choice. It would be like the Tarleton Twins. Wasn't that their name, the Tarleton Twins? Gone with the Wind? Oh, you need a... Um, you need the footman. So you're coming off. You're coming down. You're coming over. Okay. All right, so that uh, so I've got three so far. This peel's always been a good choice. That's two reputation there. Marianne's a good choice. Another two reputation. Good thing I had the housekeeper. I don't know about you, Obadiah. I really don't know. I'm going to hold off on you. You know what? How about Ann Hawkins? Let's just cash up. Ooh, that'll drop me down by three. Uh, um, how many guesses is that? One, two, three, four, five, six? Two more guesses. So what am I at here on reputation? That's four. That's six. That's eight. Prestige guest. Uh, let me tentatively give you the head housemaid. Not sure about you yet. Definitely not you. So what am I? Six minus three is three. Gets me to five three. Uh, oh, and uh, two more. Gets me a 5-5. Five, five. Everybody's inviting casual guests. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, it's a lot of casual guests to be inviting. That could be problematic. I may have to take the... Or I may just have to take my chances. I just hope I don't get any more negatives. I don't have the mother right now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, definitely not you. I guess I'll take you. Oh, am I out of ser I'm out of servants? Because I used the hall boy from servants' quarters. I can't. Oh, no, I can't take either of you? Do I take him off? I think I'm taking you off and using the lady's maid for Ann Hawkins. That means I'm back to seven guests. One, two, three, four, five, six, one more. You give me a rep that will help offset. Oh, so do you, actually. And I don't have a lady's maid for you. Oh, and I don't have a footman for you. Oh, Obadiah, I think it's your turn. <laughs> Obadiah, you are coming to the, di to the dinner. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's it. That was a dinner that was difficult to put together. I've got to be careful that I don't get any negative VP people because I still 
because I need to dismiss Ann Hawkins, and I don't want too many people that I have to dismiss. Let's continue. It's a nice, nice piece of cash. I uh, don't see negatives. That's good. Not bad for um, prestige. And now I get to uh, who do I want here? Oh, definitely you, Duke of Longford. And uh, is it going to be the garden maze for me? If I take the garden maze, it means it's seven points, but it means I'm using the West Saloon again. But there aren't any other better tiles, so I guess I'm taking the garden maze. And I will use the useful man. Uh, we must, yeah, the uh, national holidays next round. I'm probably not going to be able to participate, but that's fine because my reputation's high enough at this point that I can still use the West Saloon on the last turn of the game. So that's not too terrible. All right, let's see what uh, Sneed is doing. I'm out of servants. I may have to use the. Uh, Twelve, position two. You're taking the green room. Doesn't produce anything, which is good for me. And I got a nice. And I got a nice. Uh, reputation for the garden maze well that was my I gave away the three-point card but that's okay I don't know that I'm gonna I have two rounds to pick up another monument and I really don't think it's gonna happen so uh, probably just as well that I got rid of that so it's the national holiday and I don't have a lot of servants and I need 13 don't I one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven I need to pass don't I and have a big last turn. And I've got cash. I don't know what's out there, but let's pass. Higher two. Uh, definitely another lady's maid. And I've got the brushing room, so I'll take another footman. And I've got 600 pounds. 700 anything with front side victory points I guess it would be good drawing room is probably the best bet boy that would be nice to get six reputation but I'm on the verge I'm, I'm doing fine I'm on the verge of getting to seven five I'll probably do it on my next final turn so we'll buy the drawing room. Oh, wait a minute. But I need to get to 1,200 for that, if I'm going to use that wealth objective. So I wonder if I should pocket that. Let's see. If I use the useful man and I pay two, I have it four. I can easily, can I make eight? Oh, I got you. Oh, there's 600 right there. Okay, so uh, I'll take the drawing room. Yes. Sneed. Roll to 12. Position 2, the Manor Aviary. Prestige Guest which will no doubt resolve immediately. Who is it? It's you? That produced three reputation, got nothing. 
but another three points for Sneed. And it is my last turn for the courtship that I don't even care about. That's a bummer that was prestige. All right, I guess it's the West Saloon. What's on the other side of this? That's three points. But I need the money. Yeah, it's got to be, I think it's going to, how many gentry is that? Three gentry, four, if I use the carriage house. But now I've got servants, I can possibly go with eight. I think it's going to be the West Saloon. Nine, nine people. Let's put the hall boy on the uh, carriage house. You know, I, I don't think of the hall boy as terribly useful, but um, boy, if you have the carriage house, he, he does come in handy. All right, we're looking for nine guests. Oh, and I have to get rid of uh, Ann Hawkins, which means um, that I think you're the only person who gives me a dismiss favor, so Victoria is definitely coming. And I'll get Ann Hawkins uh, one last time. Where are you, Ann? Here you are. All right, so that's two of nine. Definitely you. And a VP card, nice. Definitely you. Definitely you. And I guess I should definitely get Diana again. Although I don't although I don't know that I need the reputation. Because I'm getting four and two. Well, but I'm losing three, so that's minus three. No, that's positive three. That gets me a five. So I don't necessarily need you. So that's five. I'll take the money. And I'll take the money. Oh, yep, I still, I still have... Uh, oh, and I'm going to put the cook on here. And I am going to use the head house maid, I guess, over here. So how many is that? Four, five, six, seven. Two more people. And I don't really need the reputation. I need money. Actually, I could... Uh, Let's see, who am I not taking? I could take you, although there's a risk of getting a casual guest that I don't want at this point. I could take you, and I could probably, I think I've got enough reputation that I could definitely get the ladies maid back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got another guest yet. And that's two, three. That's a dismiss. Four, five, two, six. Oh, I got more than enough. Well, actually, not more than enough. Uh, if I use you. That'll be get me to three. Oh no, that'll get me to seven five. Okay, so I'm going to get the servant and put you where I need you here. And now, who's left? 200 cash. I think if I've done my calculations correctly, I think I'm good. I'm going to get to seven five. I think. I hope I did my calculations correctly. I got to do one more time. Sorry. Four, five, six, seven, four, five. Oh, four? 
Oh, I miscalculated somewhere. But I don't have anybody else that can give me reputation, I don't think. I could take another prestige guest. Oh, I could take you. So who can I trade you for? How's my cash? I've got six, seven, eight, nine. Although, you know, if I'm getting, I don't need you. As long as I get to reputation seven, a couple fractions of seven isn't going to make a difference. So maybe I don't need you. I think that was what, something like four reputation, which will get me to seven, three. I think I'm good. I think we're going to go. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guests. Got the hall boy over there. I'm good. Let's go. 2,600. So you're going to dismiss. First, I'm picking for J John uh, Lord Brooks. And I just want anybody who has the most victory points, which is the Countess. Now I'm dismissing. Now I'm getting rid of you. Okay. And I've got 2,600 to spend. I'm not, I've got to make sure I have a, the 1,200 in my uh, left, so I only want to spend... Yeah, that's not going to be a problem. I was thinking I could refresh, but that'll drop me below 7. So all I'm getting is two points out of this. Uh, this will cost 600. Yeah, we'll take you. Oh, that's it. We're going right into the, the courtship, and uh, then we see who wins. Final courtship. Takes Elizabeth, will resolve Alan and Elizabeth. Is going to get a prestige guest that will no doubt resolve. Another casual guest and 400 pounds. And the last choice of the game is which objective card to get rid of. And I think it's going to be the service card. Because everything else is worth 5, 6, and 10. And, uh, did I get that VP card yet? I got that, uh, hmm. I wonder if I should redeem this for another objective card. <laughs> uh, if it's a servant card, I'm bound to do, to, I could probably do better. Oh, this is risky. It's only for a point or two. And I get a choice of two. But one of them has to be worth five. I don't know what the odds of that are. You know what? I'm going to just stick with it. I'll just get rid of you. It's only one point. I have no idea who's going to win here. But having three objectives uh, and 21 points doesn't hurt. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I came out on top. 168 to 154. Boy, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I did not expect to win. But I'll tell you, Having having those big banquets, at least three of them. I, I think there, I think I had three of them, with the with the carriage house. Boy, that was nice.
So improvement tiles, he definitely beat me there with all those prestige tiles. Gentry cards, I actually beat him. I got all three of my objectives. Uh, he got one, He got an essentials objective worth two points because I guess he only had two essentials cards. Yeah. Two essentials tiles. So, you know, with the objective cards for Sneed, it's, it's just luck of the draw. We both got 28 on reputation. He had nine, service, nine servants worth 18 points. I had 13 worth 26. He beat me a little on wealth, but that's to be expected because he doesn't spend any money. And it was a virtual tie on VP cards. Um, this was pretty exciting. I, I did not think it was going to be this close, and I didn't think I was going to win. But there you have it. If I made any mistakes, if my program made any mistakes, I'm hoping everything worked exactly correctly and that anybody watching this to see how the, the solo dynamic player works saw a game that was accurate. So if you saw, if you watched this and saw anything that was questionable, please let me know in the show notes. Uh, I do thank you for watching and um, please like and subscribe. Until the next time, bye-bye.